Yo, yo, it's Big Ant, man. Back. Another edition of Urban Politicians TV had to come tap in one time with the real J. Ken, man. I appreciate you, my boy. For shit show, for shit show, man. So, for the people that don't know, you know, introduce yourself, let them know where you're from and everything like that. I go by the real J. Ken, stand up comic, man. I'm from the north side of Houston, Texas. Acres home to be exact. You know, four, four acres, acres. Uh, yeah, that's me right for there. Sure, north sure. side, baby. For sure, so uh, so uh, growing up in Angus Home, you know, so I grew up in Greens Point, so we like right next yeah, door we to like each other. cousins. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure, so so uh, you know, for somebody who never been through Angus Home and the porch, because a lot of niggas don't know, and you know, Ace Time is different. You could one thing about Houston, you can come to Houston and come to one area, and you don't know what Houston look like at yeah. all, because it can be night and day from another area. So somebody who go to Angus Home. If that's the only part they went to, nigga, you really ain't yeah, seen the ain't whole seen. Houston. Or it's other parts, like if you go to Ace Town and you go to Midtown, Acres Home yeah. don't look nothing like that. It's two different two different areas, two different types of people, two different sceneries. Uh, the atmosphere is different. I mean, I know people that's on the north side that's never even seen Midtown and yeah. been in Houston their whole life. So just imagine if an uh, outsider come in and they, they trying to explore Houston, they, they ain't going to see too much of nothing in in a day. You gonna need a whole week to explore Houston. For shit show, for shit show. Nah, so um, you know, Acres Home is one of the, the historic Houston neighborhoods. From y'all got everything over there from like uh, horses, horses, Burns barbecue, yeah. Pee Wee's, you know, trail rides. Yeah. You got niggas outside hanging out the car washes. You got you gonna see a nigga at the car wash with a horse. Yeah. Nigga. Washing his horse at the <laughs> car wash. Yeah. Uh, you got projects over there. You got newer homes over there. They, they got big, they got big, big, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they got there big they ass here. motherfucking mansions, mansions over, yep. over there, too. It's like yep. one of them type of hoods like that. You see anything going through Acres Home, oh, man? I promise you, you see millionaires right next to a trap house yeah. on the same street. Yeah. That's normal over there to us. For shit show, for shit show. Nah, so uh, you know, you know, coming up over there, dog, what was the whole environment like for you? What you was into on your day to day program growing up? Man, basketball. Okay. Basketball was an everyday life for me and uh, and my homies growing up. Uh, we used to steal basketball goals yeah. and take them back to the apartment complex and then have full court. <laughs> you did that on the regular. You see eight niggas walking with a basketball goal down Gulf Bank. Yeah. That's us and uh. Then as we got older, you know, things started to change. You know, some people went gang banging and, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah. I mean, for the most part, it was fun. I wouldn't trade for nothing in the world, man. I loved growing up over there. Thanks, thanks. Nah, I, I know one thing about Acres Home, man. That's one of the hoods on the north side when you hear niggas rip that motherfucker proudly. Mm -hmm. But I think, man, that's down there with every hood on the north oh, side. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All yeah. niggas be ripping they shit proudly. That's every hood in Houston. Period, yeah. Period. Like, you got people that's not even from the hood part of Mo City. When you say Mo City, they going to turn up. They they lit. Yeah. So, I mean, Acres Home, that's a whole, that's our culture, man. It's just, it's love over there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you went to Ike, you went to Eisenhower? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, the story, to, high school, uh, like it's home, you know. I used to walk, walk to Ike every day. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I was at, my house. <laughs> my apartment complex and, and yeah. where I grew up was right behind yeah. Eisenhower. So I used yeah. to walk there every day. Then I left Acres home and uh, played basketball in Tyler, Texas in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, that was cool. That, that brought a different culture to my life, yeah. uh, country living, just seeing, you ever seen like, uh, you go, you see on the TV shows that you're a basketball player and they go to like the parties and the white people have the lake behind their house and jet skis, that's how Tyler was for us, <laughs> like, no, it, was, it was just crazy, I'm coming from Acres Home, yeah. seeing that, that was like, blew my mind, and then I moved back to Houston, uh, senior year, right before senior year, and back in Acres Home, wasn't in school, and uh, all the homies was at alternative schools. I had dropped out, so I'm like, man, I gotta yeah. figure out something, some school. I need to go to some school. Yeah. I had a cousin lived in Cyprus, 
I just called him random, like, what school you go to? And he said, South Falls. I said, well, I asked your mama if I could sleep on y'all couch and graduate. She was like, yeah, that's how I ended up in Cyprus. And that was a whole different, day. I've never seen a school as big as South Falls before. Yeah. It was like a college, but that helped, you know, in the long run. A lot of the people I met in Cyprus and at that school are still a part of my life right now. That's what's up, that's what's up. Now, so uh, Cyprus, so, so why did you uh, drop out of school initially? I didn't it's, drop or out. Or stop going, or stop I going. Did, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I missed 15 days of school in a month. Okay. But I didn't get in trouble because I had like the second highest grade in the class and they couldn't wrap their head around me. It's like school's just easy. Okay. And uh, the reason I moved back from Tyler was my dad, my stepdad is from Belize and the paperwork wasn't right or something. So they just shut the whole little play that we had out there down and we had to come back to Houston. Gotcha. And it's, I didn't drop out of school. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I just didn't have a school to go to for gotcha. like two, three weeks. I just didn't have a school. Yeah, man, so, you know, you up out of school, dog, you know, what made you just start going and doing your creative side of shit like that in life, man? Like, what made you jump out there and get into your creative bag and things? It's when I, it's when I, uh, I always been creative. Uh -huh. I always just had something going. Like, even when I got to South Falls, I remember one time I dressed up as Michael Jackson. Okay. And I had my homeboy, <laughs> DJ Wall, real big dude as the security guard. So we just schemed up like, hey, we just gonna go to school and play music the whole day and I'ma just dance and do whatever. So I had always had that in me, but what really got me going, I went to Sam Houston in college. And uh, I just ended up out there. I wasn't really in school or nothing, I just ended up. But I ended up starting like a promotion company called Stay Focused Promotions. And we doing the clubs and we doing parties and then one day I just had the bright idea like I'm starting them seeing. Cause I seen my bro doing it, Labo was doing it. He taught me how to MC. And once I got that mic in my hand, it was like, this is it. This is it. This all I want to do is just entertain people with this microphone. Gotcha, gotcha. Now so like I'm no. shorting a lot of it down. It's a long story, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, it's all good, it's all good. Nah, so you know, MCing man, and I see that kind of happen sometimes, you know, MCing like go hand in hand, just you know, even with promoting. Yeah. Then you see all this shit going on and then you just started jumping in a lot of other lanes after becoming an MC. Mm -hmm. So what all lanes would you that what made you try the other lanes? Was it like I mean, trying Something to work. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people scared to try because they scared to fail. I was trying everything. I didn't care. I was rapping. Uh, started a clothing line, High Hopes Clothing, with my boy Bird. I was still doing the state focus promotions with Skrilla and Corey Mo, and I'm trying everything. And then uh, what started working was the MCing thing. Okay. I started getting noticed as being you know, a good MC or top MC in Houston. The promoter started respecting me. The I started gaining a fan base, and that then I started an art show. <laughs> you know, what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm trying everything, everything. The art show is still going good. It's successful. Yeah. All access art show, and then uh, from MCing, you meet uh, a lot of people along the way. So when I was MCing in college, I met a guy named Shabazz who was doing stand-up comedy. So I'm in the club, I'm seeing he used to come to the clubs all the time, but sometimes I would stop the music and just go in, like rank on everybody. Yeah. And I used to rank on them. So one day he's like, man, you always joking, come do come do stand up. <laughs> I'm like, mm, nah, be, I'm a MC. And stand up, I'm a MC. You know, I'm in the clubs. Yeah. He's like, nah, you you got something from try. I went to Carol's. <laughs> Open mic night and did my thing and it went from there.